Okay. I think my wife is actually starting to get sort of mad at me here. The thing is, there's just so many good bikes on the market, and I love riding all of them, and it makes me want them. But I guess that's why you're here, to see my new bike. This is my intense 951 XC. Okay, so my wife isn't the most stoked on this purchase, but she keeps booking these Disney World trips, and I get frustrated, so I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna spend some money too. But for real, I should probably stop buying bikes. I'm pretty happy with the collection I have right now. But if you guys want to see me ride more bikes, you could subscribe to our channel and tell me how much you want me to get some more bikes to show on the channel. That would really help prove to my wife that I need more bikes. So I guess it's on you guys. If you want to see us ride and buy more bikes, then like this video and subscribe to our channel and then we'll know that we need to purchase more bikes and make my wife more angry. But anyways, this is my intense 951 XC. You may not have heard of this bike because pretty much no one has heard of this bike. Intense made this specific bike very quietly, under the radar, and sort of to sell at Costco. That's what this bike is known as, the Costco bike. But you can also get it on a intense 951 specific website that is direct consumer and you can also buy it through any intense dealer. Like everything right now, the price of this bike seems to be changing all the time and obviously it's going up. The most recent MSRP that I saw was $3,600 and I'm going to be honest with you guys, I didn't pay that. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean I got hooked up from intense, but I'm open to offers intense if you watch this video. Nope, I bought this bike on Pink Bike Buy Sell Trade, extremely lightly used. I don't even think the guy really used it, but I paid 2800 bucks and I feel like that was a steal. I'm so jacked on this bike. So why did I get an XC bike? Well, I don't really consider it an XC bike proper. I think this is more of a down country bike. It's got very down country bike geometry. And since I rode Andy's YT Izzo, which if you haven't seen that video, you can check it out on our channel, it's out there. Um, that bike really blew me away. Like, uh, it was so fast and fun on my local trails, which I would never call fast and fun. I think Wisconsin trails, at least where I live, are just, I don't wanna talk about it. Um, but I wanted to get out more and enjoy the trails that I have. And my Jeff Z, it was getting too big and burly. Like I'm turning it into an enduro bike and it's not fun. So I wanted something more fun, lighter, faster. And this bike checks all those boxes. One thing that's really awesome about this bike is that it is a fully carbon frame. That means front and rear triangle are carbon. That is different than the YTs at the $3,500 price range. YT does usually come with a hybrid, they call it a hybrid frame, which is an aluminum rear triangle. So, um, they also have this bike in a 951 trail version, which is a little more travel, and that bike also is a fully carbon frame. These bikes only come in one color, and that is a gloss gray, maybe silver, grayish silver. I really like how it looks. If you guys are familiar with Intense's lineup, they don't have the best paint jobs, and that's pretty much universal across the board, and no one likes how Intense paints their bikes. They look very corny. I have no issues with this. I think all their bikes should come with just a solid paint job like this. It looks really good. Another thing I should probably mention is that even though this is technically a standalone series, the 951 series, this is based off the Sniper T, which is one of their higher end XC and downcountry bikes. The build kit is basically what you'd expect out of a bike in this price category. It comes with SRAM NX 1x12 drivetrain. Anyone who's watched our videos knows I am not a giant SRAM fan, but I'm, I'm giving this drivetrain a chance. I know it's a budget drivetrain. It seems like SRAM has made a lot of improvements and it's holding up just fine. It's still not the best though. It's not Shimano to me, so eventually I will swap this out probably for Shimano SLX. This bike features 120 millimeters of travel front and rear, and it is Fox 34 rhythm fork up front and a Fox float in the rear. 
I don't really have too much to say about the suspension. It seems to work pretty well. Before I even rode the bike, I had every intention of bumping the front fork travel up from 120 millimeters to 130. I assumed that would be an upgrade that would suit my riding style. But after my first couple rides, I decided the bike is fine just the way it is. If I need more travel for a certain trail, I still own my YT Jeffsy. The bike did come with a bunch of intense branded parts. They all seem like really good quality, but I did have some race face next are carbon handlebars and stem laying around. So I threw those on here because why not? The brakes on here are the TRP slate T4. I've never ridden these specific brakes. They feel a lot like a Shimano, like they have a very um, instant bite point, so I like that, but I would say they have a touch less modulation than Shimano's. And these are four piston brakes, which is kind of interesting for an XC bike, but I don't have too much to complain about because uh, they stop me just fine, and I think it's a pretty smart spec choice. It's nice to see something other than cheap Saram brakes that I would just rather throw away. I'm not going to lie, I was probably the most worried about the wheel set. These are intense branded hubs laced to WTB 27 millimeter rims. The reason I was a bit worried is because the YouTuber MTB Rad Dad, who also has a video on this bike, mentioned that the hub engagement wasn't good. I do own a bike that has horrific hub engagement and it is not fun to ride. Luckily, they're not that horrible. I'm, I'm okay with them. MTB Rad Dad did mention that he may feel biased because he rides Hope hubs most of the time. So I totally get that. Um, I'm used to riding cheaper wheels anyways. I would say these are more than sufficient for most riders. You do get an intense branded dropper seat post and lever. This is a size medium bike and it comes with a 150 mil dropper, so that's perfect for me. For tires, Intense chose the Kenda Regolith Pro tire. This is a super fast rolling tire. On the XC model, it comes with 2.2 wide tires, and that's something I may actually change. Going into this purchase, I had a few question marks on how I would like a few things. The biggest two were how much would I hate the Saram NX drivetrain, and the other were the tires. Would they hold up to the abuse I would put them through, and would they even grip well? I think that if I swap the front tire out for a wider version of the same tire, I will get the amount of grip that I expected. I'm currently still hitting corners with a lot of hesitation because I can tell they want to break loose from me. That being said, I do like these tires. They're very fast and they have grip in most situations. It's just when I'm really pushing that front tire, I have a hard time trusting it just yet. Here's what that hub sounds like. So that's the engagement points you hear. So stock with tubes and no pedals. They say this bike in medium weighs 28.4. Well, I have it converted to tubeless I have plastic flat pedals on here, and with these carbon bars and race face stem, I have it at 27 and a half. So that's pretty dang impressive. My Jeff C is like probably around 33 pounds right now. What would be really cool is if I can get this thing under 27. I have a few ideas how I can get there, but that might have to wait until next season because I've been spending too much money. So that's really it. I just thought I'd show off my sick new bike. I um, couldn't be more stoked on this thing. It rides so incredible. It's handled everything I've thrown at it so far. It's still got some, some tests to go. I'd really like to get Andy on this thing to see what he thinks compared to his Izzo. The Izzo does have a little, the Izzo does have a little bit more travel, so it probably is a touch more capable. 
but I'm stunned at everything this bike has handled so far. It's funny because my first ride on this bike, I went to my absolute most boring local trail and I was smiling the whole time I was there. I just couldn't believe how much fun this bike was for me to ride there. All right, Alpine Valley does have a small jump trail called Swoops and Whoops. All right, let's give her a rip and see how this thing handles on it. So far, I'm totally in love with this bike. It climbs and descends better than I expected. It's been a total game changer for me and my attitude towards riding some of my local trails. I really look forward to putting this bike through some more abuse in the near future, and hopefully it keeps me off doing so many gravel miles and puts me back in the woods for some more single track. And that's enough. It's way too hot out here. So let me know what you guys think of this thing. Is this a sick bike or what? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps our channel out a ton. And I'll see you next time.